So recently I had a viewer ask, how do you get a bash shell on a Windows machine? And I wanted to do a video response, but I don't have any Windows machines. And setting up Windows in a virtual machine is just a pain in the butt. Uh, but I was did get access to a Windows machine, and I had an opportunity to record a couple of videos on this topic. Unfortunately, I installed OBS to record the video, and I recorded both videos. There was no microphone, so I had to use my phone to record the audio, and OBS to record the video. Assuming that OBS, I didn't, I didn't change any of the settings, I just went the default settings, assuming it would save to an MKV, or an MP4, or even an AUG file. But no, it saved as a flash video file, FLV file, and which it, I don't know why. Uh, and so I finished recording these videos, and I went to look at them, and of course, Windows out of the box can't play those files. The Windows Media Player just doesn't support that codec. So I couldn't even check the videos after recording them. And I finally got them back to my Linux machine, uh, popped them on, and it seems like they got like one frame every five seconds of recording. Uh, so I, I apologize. This is the best I could do in the situation that I had. Uh, but here is a video uh, installing actually BusyBox on uh, a Windows machine to get a Unix type shell. Uh, this particular compilation of BusyBox uh, has something that's called Bash, although as I mentioned in the video, I don't think it truly is Bash. I would highly doubt it. And I did double check that uh, Linux installs of BusyBox do not have a Bash shell. It's just the Ash shell, A-S-H, uh, which I'm assuming is probably what this is linking to and just calling it Bash uh, just as a pointer, a shortcut, or a hyperlink, or not hyperlink, but just a symbolic link to the Ash shell. Anyway, here's that video. Sorry about the quality. Hopefully you can follow along. Okay, I'm recording the audio and video separately because I don't have a microphone on this machine, so hopefully things will be somewhat in sync. Okay, so we're going to be looking at uh, installing Bash, kind of, sort of, on Windows. And there's a few different ways to do this, and I'll go over a few different ways uh, over a couple of videos. Uh, but right now we're just going to be looking at, I like to try to find single individual binary files, and um, I have found binaries of Bash in the past, uh, but I have been unable to find that particular binary file. But most of the time when I'm on a Windows machine and I need a decent shell, I usually look to BusyBox because it also has a lot of those core tools built into it. And although it may not actually truly be Bash, but let's, let's quickly look at that. Just Google BusyBox for Windows, and one of the first ones that will come up will be BusyBox-W32Flippery.org. And we're going to scroll down here to where the link to the executable somewhere, 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 right here. We'll download that, and then I will open up CMD, navigate to my downloads directory, and if we look at what's in here, you can see that BusyBox 64 is in there. And if we run BusyBox 64, 64 bit, go ahead and enter, it will give us a list of the commands. And you notice that it has a lot of those tools that you'll expect to find with BusyBox, but uh, certain things are missing. You don't have uh, basically like the server type stuff. You don't have your HTTP daemon, your, your web server, FTP server, or telnet server. You have the clients for those sort of things, such as wget. Uh, but you have a lot of your core tools here. You have dd, you have df, you have echo, you have du, uh, you have grep, awk, and uh, netcat, or nc, mv to move, pwd, uh, who is, all this sort of stuff. Some of these are, are slimmed down. They aren't the full versions of the program, just like BusyBox on Linux. Um, like, uh, for example, like wget or the nc program may not be fully featured, but a lot of those core features are there. And the way you could use a lot of these is you type BusyBox and the command you want, such as wget. I didn't give it a URL, so it's just giving me the help output for that. Um, but you don't want to have to type BusyBox and then the command every single time. Well, if you, again, run BusyBox, <coughs> excuse me, You'll see a list of commands, and you'll notice that it has here, it has bash listed as a command. Although I'm not really sure if this is truly bash. I've never noticed that it actually said bash before. I've always noticed that it's the, the ash shell, or A-S-H shell. Um, and I'm assuming, and I could be wrong, someone could correct me here, uh, that the bash in this is actually probably linking to the ash shell, and it's just putting that in there uh, so that scripts will look towards that because they're probably mostly compatible, but they may not be fully compatible. So if I wanted to, I could type in uh, our executable here and then type in bash, and it actually gives me a bash shell. And now all those commands, uh, it, it works like a, a shell just on your Linux or Unix-like machine. Uh, and I can start running these commands. I can type wget, and wget's there. I can type in vi. It actually has vi in there, and I can type hello world. I can quit out of that. Uh, if 
I type help at any point, it will give me a list of those commands. You know, netcat, um, grep, awk. And again, these might be slimmed down versions of the programs, but those core tools are there where if you had just a, a um, bash binary, a lot of these core tools, you'll be able to do pure bash stuff, but a lot of these core tools that are not part of bash would be in there. And the nice thing about this um, binary file here of BusyBox, if I list this out, you'll see it's about half a megabyte. So it's relatively small and has a majority of those tools you're going to use. Now, if you want to be able to access this from anywhere on your system, you can copy it to one of your path directories. I usually will copy it to um, your Windows System 32 folder. Of course, you'll need admin rights for, to do that. So we'll go ahead and do CMD, and then you can right-click and say Run as Administrator, or oops, what I normally do is just hit Control Shift and Enter, and I'll just click Yes to get past this user access control or whatever it's called. And now I can copy uh, from my users LX1000 downloads uh, BusyBox and said BusyBox64. I'll just call it busybox.exe and now I should be able to call busybox from anywhere on my system so even though I'm not in the directory of busybox I should be able to run busybox here and I could just type anywhere busy busybox uh, sh or bash or ash I'm pretty sure they all link into the same thing and now I have my shell anywhere I want and actually a lot of these core tools uh, there is a way to link them to BusyBox, just like you would on a Linux system, to where I could use wget or ncat or sleep or sort or all these commands um, in like just regular, um, what you call it, batch file, and actually call them from the Windows shell rather than uh, actually logging to the shell here. But usually this is what I do and when I'm in a pinch and I'm stuck at a Windows machine and I need a decent shell, that is what I use. Next time we'll look at another option uh, that uh, might be useful for you. So uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Have a great day.